Today we're going to be learning about conditional versus absolute convergence. <laughs> Basically, the purpose of this lesson is to determine if a series converges absolutely or conditionally. So previously we learned um, the relationship, uh, how to determine if a series converges or diverges, but we weren't able to compare the positive series and its alternating counterpart, which we will now learn how to do. Absolute convergence is when both the absolute value of the series and the original series, they both converge. And conditional converge convergence is when the original series does converge, but the absolute value of it does not. So in order to figure out if the original function converges or not, we first need to determine, to do all the tests for convergence or divergence um, to figure out if it converges. So if it does not converge, then um, you already know that the absolute value doesn't uh, converge either, so then um, overall it just diverges. But if the original function does converge, then you need to do the same tests for the absolute value of the function to see if it converges. If the absolute value does not converge, then the function is conditionally convergent. But if it does, then it's absolutely convergent. So just to review some of the tests for convergence and divergence. The nth term test, basically you take the limit of the function as n approaches infinity. If it's any finite positive value but zero, then the function diverges. Geometric series, oh, and if the limit equals zero, that still does not prove convergence, so then you have to do another test for that. For the geometric series test, if the absolute value of r is less than one, it diver it converges, and then if it's anything greater than one, it diverges. P-series test, if the um, power of the function is less than or equal to one, the series diverges, it's greater than one, it converges. Alternating series test, if the absolute value of the function absolute value of the terms of the function are decreasing and the limit as the function approaches as n of the function approaches infinity equals zero then the series is convergent the next test that we're going to talk about um, is the integral test so for the integral test you have to take the integral of the series um, it's an improper integral so um, we're finding the integral of the series as it approaches infinity. So if the integral of it exists, then it means if you get like a finite number, then it means that the series converges. Meanwhile, if the integral does not exist and gives you the diverges answer, then it means that the original series also diverges. Next, we'll talk about the ratio test. So um, for the ratio test, you just compare, you take the original series and then take the term the next term in the series and divide that by their first term of the series and you take the limit as that approaches infinity so the limit that you get if it's less than one then it means that the original series converges absolutely and if it's greater than one then it means it diverges um, if you get an answer of one when you do this and it means that the test is inconclusive and you have to find a different test to figure out the convergence and divergence it works well with factorials and exponentials next we have the direct comparison test so for this you can compare your original series to any other series um, basically if the series that you're comparing it to converges and it's larger than your original series then it means that your original series converges if the series that you compare your original series to is less than your original series and it diverges then it means that your original series will also diverge the next test we'll talk about is the limit comparison test and this one um, you're comparing a positive series with another positive series so if you take the limit as of as this if you, if you take the limit of the original <laughs> series divided by the series you're comparing it to as it approaches infinity then um, if you get the, if your answer is greater than zero then it means that both series either converge or they both diverge so you have to figure before you do this test you have to figure out whether or not the 
the, the series you're comparing it to converges or diverges. And this test works well with messy algebraic series, usually compared to P-series. Go. Um, okay, so this is the first problem we're going to start off with for our practice. Um, so the first thing we look at is the original function to test if it's, if it's absolute or conditionally convergent. Um, so we'll go through the different tests to see if it converges or not. And right off the bat, we can see that this is an alternate series, alternate harmonic series. And alternate harmonic series always converges. Next, we are going to take the absolute value. So that equals to just 1 to the n over n. And this is the harmonic series, which diverges. So since the original function converges and the absolute value of the function diverges, we know that this problem is conditionally convergent. Okay, so this is the second problem that we'll practice with. Um, so first we test the original function. And looking at this problem, we can see that um, we can test it with P the P-series test. So we look at n squared, and since P is equal to 2, this number right here, and it's greater than 1, it converges. And through the direct comparison test, We compare n squared, 1 over n squared, which is greater than cosine n over n squared. And we know that if the larger function converges, then the smaller function also converges. So this function, um, the original function converges. So then we look at the absolute value. Which equals um, cosine n over n squared because cosine n is an even function and n is to the power of 2. So we can essentially do the same test. Compare it to 1 over n squared, which is greater than cosine n over n squared. And through dct we see that um, cosine n over n squared converges. So the function is absolutely convergent. Alright, so our third problem is this. So we're going to first start by finding whether the original series converges or diverges. So uh, with this, we can take the nth term test. So if you limit as n approaches infinity of the series. And because this does not equal 0, then this original function diverges. And that's your answer. Because this function diverges, the absolute value of this function will also diverge. This is our fourth problem, and first we're going to start off by finding whether the original series converges or diverges. So since this is an alternating series, we can apply the alternating series test. So we'll take the series, the limit as a series approaches infinity. So because um, this approaches zero, because this approaches zero, then we can say that this original series converges. Okay, and then now we're going to find whether the absolute value of this series converges or diverges. 
So um, the absolute value would be. Oh wow! Yeah. Like, I literally just look at this. And we can apply the. Um, but like, the <laughs> And the highest exponent in this function right now in the series is um, 1 because it's like an function power. So because p equals 1, then that means that the series must diverge. So because the original series converges and the absolute value diverges, then it means that this function is conditionally has conditional convergence. So, just as a review, we'll talk about the process of finding whether a series converges absolutely or conditionally. So, if the original series converges, or does not converge, then your answer will be diverges. If the original series does converge, then you have to figure out if the absolute value of it converges. So if it doesn't, then your answer is that it converges conditionally. And if it does, then if it does converge, then it means that your answer is converges absolutely.